Hi there, it's Brian. I'm back again for another video. Today I wanted to talk about um, attachment methods, and which kind of seems like a strange way to start, but I'll explain it as we go on. Uh, as you can see currently, as I back away from the camera, I'm wearing uh, some of the equipment that I use whenever I'm just kind of out in the woods by myself, and I wanted to wear more primitive or traditional type equipment. I also use this when I am out uh, like in a residence festival or something, and I'm wearing a more medieval style costume, though not all of this translates over to that. I know, like the knife that I'm carrying here, for example, is much more of a modern uh, Western style knife, and not necessarily a medieval knife. But one of the issues that I run into with this is I love cross straps. I have a lot of different things that I wear across my body. Like I've got my, my small, kind of possibles bag, haversack kind of bag right there. And then on the other side, got my my boda, my water skin here. And then if I am also, if I'm at a Renaissance festival, I typically also wear a sword and I normally wear that on a baldric just for simplicity's sake, because if you're in a crowd and you're having to sit down and things like that, being able to just take the baldric off and set it off to the side is, is very convenient. But that's a lot of things going across my body. And then if, if I am also uh, using my bow, then I've got a quiver as well. So the straps start to add up and then all the different layers of straps and trying to keep it all together, it gets really cumbersome. Uh, you also have the issues with if I'm actually out and I'm camping and I'm using a more traditional style of gear, most of the time I'll have a blanket roll, which gives me one other strap that's around my body. So that's real estate becomes kind of important and valuable. So one of the things that I've been looking to do is to use my existing straps for more things. And um, one, of one, one of the things that I wanted to start carrying was a signal horn, like for blowing. And um, additionally, just adding extra pouches. And I had looked at like sewing things onto either my baldric or to the sh shoulder strap of my, my haversack. The problem is I've got multiple different haversacks that I use with different straps and I didn't want to have to keep making pouches and having them all so on and and I also hate permanently attaching things to this because then if what if I'm wearing another strap over it I don't want it to rub etc so here's some of the things that that I've come up with hey dude I have a, a guest this is Judah what you got I have a lot of stuff that I can't carry you have a lot of stuff that you can't carry that's a struggle, buddy. See, that's one of the things that I'm actually talking about right now, is having so much stuff that I can't carry it. That wasn't planned. Just, you know, natural segue there. So what I'm talking about right now is my signal horn. So I'm going to take off water skin first because it's on top of my shoulder bag here. I'll look it back over. Typically, my water skin rides on top of whatever I'm wearing so that I can access it without having to take anything else off while I'm on the move. And I shot a move, uh, a video about the Boda and the advantages for how you can kind of drink out of it while you're on the move without really a lot of extra movement. So this is kind of what I came up with. A lot of people use like a vertical horn holder on their belt, but because of the, the amount of stuff that I carry, again, I don't have a lot of space on my belt either. So I did make just a vertical horn holder for that to slide into, which works really well. Um, it is wet formed to the horn, so it's very secure once it's down in there. But what I did, I don't know how well y'all can see this. I punched three holes, or four holes rather, in this. And the reason of the pattern of these holes is, this was an existing horn holder that I made. And very, very early on, I made this horn holder horizontal and had it mounted to my belt. It was a terrible idea. The horn kept falling out all the time. If you jammed it in there, it would be great. Until you started moving, you'd tap it and fall out, which is really loud. Um, this falling on any surface at all, much less like gravel or something, is super dang loud. So those holes were already there for when it was laced onto something else. The same as these holes around here. Those are old lacing holes. Um, but I am economical. We'll go, we'll go with that instead of cheap. Um, I'm also, I'm cheap. And uh, I want to use the resources that I had. So as a proof of concept, I just used this. And so what I did is I took the, the bottom two holes and I ran a lace through that. Right. 
I brought those two, those lace ends up and out of this hole and this hole. And then when I brought them down, I just tucked them back underneath like that. And I've seen this used um, for saddles and other things like that for holding straps together. And I thought, well, why couldn't I use that same modular system with the gear that I have? Now, now that I've done my proof of concept, what I'll look at doing is actually taking and having a single pattern of holes that I use on all of my equipment so that on my baldric or on this belt, any of my different pouches or any of my different accessories that I add on will all fit with the same lacing pattern. But that is how that worked. And then when I put it on, hopefully without hitting Judah in the face with my horn, and I tend to wear this kind of around my back, like that. There he is. See, it just kind of snugs in, just like that. I do have to be careful with the horn riding next to the knife. The knife is not something that I normally wear um, if I was at a Renaissance Festival or something like that. But again, all of this would be on the other side at a Renaissance Festival because then my baldric would be here and my sword would be riding right there. So that's the horn attachment to the shoulder strap. And the other type of attachment method I wanted to talk about was actually on this knife. So let's take this off and this off. Set them on the ground there. Now let's talk about this. So I'm actually gonna bring the camera down. A little bit. Hopefully we can see that a little bit better. So when I first made this knife sheath, I got this, this knife was given to me by a friend of mine named Paul Miller. And it's just, you know, a Winchester Bowie knife. And it had the simple ballistic nylon sheath. And I, I hate um, ballistic nylon sheaths in general. And I was going to be doing a Western costume. And I wanted to be able to wear this knife. So I threw this sheath together very quickly. And with the materials that I had on hand. I had just enough leather to make the sheath and the welt. I, the piece of leather that I had was so small, I don't know if you can see this, but the sh knife doesn't actually go all the way down into the sheath itself. I, bonus music to go with this episode. Um, but I had just a little piece of scrap left, and what I did was I put a little loop on the back of here for this piece of leather lace to go through. And the way this sheath works, depending on which side, so right now I'm wearing it reversed, on my left side. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you all how this works, this slides down under the belt and then the laces actually go outside the belt like this, wrap around the sheath, and then I just tie it off and I'll go through that process in just a second. And it was just an improvised quick method to do this with the materials that I had on hand. I don't think that this is historical. I, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody do this, so I'm not going to claim that this is the way it was done or that this is some brilliant new innovation because it has its drawbacks. Um, but it's using the resources that I had on hand to make something functional. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Now, if I wanted to carry it like this, this would be on the outside, but essentially it functions the same way either way. Slide that in, oh, up to the laces. And I'm gonna take the laces, cross them behind the sheath, pull them tight. And I'm just gonna throw a square knot in it, just like that. So it's pretty quick to get on and off. You can adjust the angle fairly well. And once it's in there, it's solid, like it doesn't move at all. The sheath, the knife slides in and out very naturally, right? It rides a little bit high on the hip, which I like, especially with a longer knife, because that means if I sit down, I don't have this length of sheath down there. Uh, it keeps this up tucked next to my side. It's very comfortable for me. So now I've got a tomahawk riding on one side, my knife on the other side. So if I was going to do, you know, we go back to the tomahawk videos that I shot earlier, 
everything set up the way that it needs to be for that. You also do have the option with it riding like this. I could twist my wrist over, I could pull it out with a saber grip as well if I wanted to do that. It's actually my preferred way to use the knife. Um, but honestly, if I was going to be using this knife in a non-fighting capacity, I'd be using it in my right hand, which means I can just reach across and pull it out. Just like that. So that's just a couple of alternate attachment methods that I've been working on. And we're back up. And nothing really extraordinary, fancy, out of the ordinary. Um, but it's just, I've been trying to come up with alternate ways to do things. One, to minimize the amount of straps that I have hanging on. Make use of the limited belt space that I have and still be able to carry all the things that I would like to carry. Um, because there are, there are limits to how much you can carry using traditional gear. I'm not wearing like a web vest like in the military where I've got pouches hanging all over it and I can just strap more and more stuff on. Um, because once you're going with more primitive kit, you're looking at more weight. I also try to take into account noise. Uh, so I'm very careful about how I place my things so that there's no noise. When I first put my horn on, I was noticing that my antler that I have dangling from my fire starting pouch was tapping on that. So whenever I'm carrying my horn, I have to tuck my antler in so that it's not dangling around. And actually when I'm moving in the woods, I tuck that in anyway because I don't like things just swinging all over the place. But anyway, I hope that was interesting. I'm looking to use this method more in the future uh, with my baldric, ad attaching additional pouches to that and really increasing the versatility of what I'm working with. So thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again on my next video. And here comes Judah for the ending. Ah, say bye. <laughs>